I'm Brian Campbell here in tropical Dorado, Puerto Rico at the training camp for Logan Paul when the YouTube star and sensation turned pugilist prepares for his showdown against the self-proclaimed TBE himself, Floyd Money Mayweather. It all goes down Sunday night, June 6th, Hard Rock Stadium, only on Showtime pay-per-view. We're gonna go inside as Logan prepares to use his size and youth advantage to upset one of the greatest fighters in the history of the sport. We're gonna sit down with Logan Paul. I wanna really look into his eyes and find out what are his motivations for a fight this dangerous against such an accomplished boxer as Floyd Mayweather. He already has money, fame, the type of things someone might think they're getting from fighting Floyd Mayweather. We know he's in shape, but strategically, how can he make up in terms of the gap in experience? This is a spectacle, but call it what you want. It's gonna be real when they throw fists. Very few are giving Logan Paul a chance in this one. I want to find out what he's thinking. What's up, bro? Logan, nice to meet you, man. Great. Fire up? Great, yeah, bro. Stoked. Cool. This shit is great. <laughs> no fear, no fear. God. Logan Paul, June 6th, bragging rights. Showtime pay-per-view against Floyd Mayweather. Look, the question you're probably gonna get from everybody is why, but I wanna hedge that by saying, you have the two things most people might get into this situation to get, fame and a whole lot of money. So are you crazy? Why take on a challenge like this? It's a great question, why? Why would I do something like this? Uh, yeah, I am crazy. Uh, you know, life is short, I've been given one. I have a vessel that is primed to fight and I work hard as shit. So when I was blessed with the opportunity to take everything away from Floyd, I said, yeah, let us do that. <laughs> you say take everything away, what does that mean? I mean, <laughs> think about it. The, the poster says bragging rights. Floyd beats me, <laughs> what bragging rights are there? You beat a YouTuber, like, good job. I beat Floyd, his whole life means absolutely nothing. 50 wins, but you lost to a podcasting, Pokemon collecting YouTuber. So yeah, he's got a lot on the table. I'm just going in there, no fucks given. We know that when you guys touch gloves on June 6th, it's, it's for real. There's no, you know, WWE, there's storyline. But yeah. you seem to be embracing the, for lack of a better term, a shit show sort of element to this fight. Are you? That, that this is carnival circus fun? It is a circus, but I'm going to be honest, I wasn't at first. Like, I was really treating this kind of like a respectful exhibition. Uh, wanted to be, uh, acknowledge Floyd's career path and everything he's accomplished. And I was trying to be respectful. And then my brother took his hat. <laughs> And he said he was gonna kill Jake. And like, I don't take that shit lightly. It's become super personal. Um, and just the way he's talking online, like he thinks he's in control of this fight to the T. Uh, it's gonna take 44 years of Floyd's life for him to be humbled. That gotcha hat moment was viral. It broke everything. Yeah. It, it's gonna be more responsible to sell this, for selling this fight than, than really anything else. Yeah. Uh, walk me through that. Take me on an oral history from your perspective because you were off to the side after the press work had been done. Your brother Jake Paul gets in Floyd's face. Where are you and what are you seeing? So Jake told me he was gonna take his hat and I seen his hat and I was like, I should take that hat. <laughs> and I didn't think he was serious. It seems like such a rudimentary childish thing to do. Uh, something about it was just calling my name and I thought, I knew it was gonna be like a hilarious troll moment and I knew it would piss him off like crazy. You know, I thought it was a fucking, I thought it was a joke. I come off stage, Floyd and I had some personal back and forths. I said, yo, I'm a, I'm, I wanna hurt him. Jake said, I'm gonna take his hat. And he did. And Floyd didn't get a haircut that day. Jake took his hat. I see some shit going down. Immediately I knew it's the fault of my brother. So I went in there and tried to save his ass. But like, shout out to Floyd's security team. You've done a great job of keeping me away from Jake. <laughs> They're big and there's a lot of them. Jake told us he took an uppercut from Floyd. It was, I think it was a, two, a straight two. I think it was a straight right hand. It was an uppercut. Uh, you hear it, like you hear it smack. Uh, his bodyguards are holding me back and my face was like this and he's just like, what the fuck? And he hits me with an uppercut. He got a black eye. I think it's cool though. And he freaks out and says he wants to kill me and like, it's pretty hilarious. That's a real thing. Yeah, yeah. 
That was the word on the street. I mean, I mean, how many people can like point to a black eye and say, "Look, look, Floyd Mayweather punched me in the face." <laughs> and to be honest, uh, and I told my brother this, I was like, "The guy doesn't hit hard." And then, and then I got asked, I got asked in an interview if uh, if we were planning on pursuing legal action, like suing, because you know it's assault. I mean, but also Jake, that was a theft. Got your hat. I don't know. They cancel out. <laughs> well, look, b back to that. I mean, you know, your brother has said publicly that you guys are masterful trolls. That's what you do. Is it a troll job just going from being YouTube sensation to getting Floyd Mayweather to agree to a boxing match with you? Is that a troll job in itself? You're witnessing the greatest finesse in history. Yeah. Why is Floyd Mayweather getting in the ring with me? Like, he, he has everything to lose. You know what I'm saying? Like, he got fin you got finessed. You got finessed, Floyd. And then imagine I beat him for one second. I have to imagine taking this fight would be a regret. You said it, and, and there's, a, you know, there's a lot of people giving you no chance. There's people giving you sure. a puncher's chance. You said, imagine if I beat him. Yeah, imagine. You, how much are you visualizing that? I mean, you're in this to win it, there's no doubt about it, but how much of a chance are you personally giving yourself? I don't know. I don't know if there's a, a statistic for that, you know, an answer for how much of a chance there is. I don't know, you know, it's a fight. Anything can happen. I'm, Fully equipped, I have all the tools in my toolbox. I have the weapons, my blades are sharp. I want this shit so bad. And again, I have nothing to lose. Like I have absolutely nothing to lose. I don't care, I don't give a fuck about Floyd Mayweather or his 15-0 record, it means nothing to me. Not to mention like, does he think I suck? And by the way, the answer could be yes. Like nothing online is exceptionally spectacular of me boxing, but uh, in the past year and a half, We've gotten to a really, really, really good spot. And I think on June 6th, we're gonna find out why there's weight classes in boxing. You know, I'm not some guy going in there and tapping you. I ain't got pillow hands. I hit hard and I'm fast and I'm tall. And my reach is 76, but I fight like I'm 86 inch reach. Like I'm long, I'm strong, I'm mean, I'm angry. You know, and I want this. I've, shit. <laughs> I've interviewed so many boxers and mixed martial arts fighters over the years, and they say to get over that mental hurdle, let's say in the locker room before a fight, to be able to get this courage to get out there, they have to come to terms with the worst case scenario. Yes, yeah, surrender. Have, have you come to terms with the idea that this could be a meme for a lifetime? Thousand percent. Thousand percent. I've visualized every positive and every negative that can possibly happen in this fight, every outcome, good and bad, in my head already. So I'm braced for when it happens. Um, it's a fight. Anything can happen. Um, and I, I really don't give a fuck about the negative outcome. I just don't, I just, I don't know. I'm going in there just gonna do the best I possibly can and I believe that's gonna lead to me beating Floyd Mayweather. I talked to your brother Jake earlier today and he's big on wanting the respect from the traditional boxing world that this isn't a joke, this isn't a sideshow and all that. Is that the same for you? Are you looking to to win people over by doing this? Are you looking for, for, does it offend you when people say circus celebrity sort of? No, I get it. I get it. We, uh, we're here putting on a show and we're just getting started in boxing. I totally get it. Like this is the beginning of a very long career path for Jake and I. I'd be surprised if people didn't have their doubts right at the beginning. You know, but what happens in two years? In three years? When we're really good at the sport, right? We're, we're beating professional boxers. We're very skilled. Um, really earning our respect in in the uh in the sport I, I don't know people are gonna shut up eventually like i get it though for now so this is not a a, a one-off and then if you lose you're humbled and you go away is this a boxing takeover in some way yeah for sure i mean i don't know if it's a i, I guess you could say that i don't know like i'm not jake and i aren't taking over boxing but i think we're definitely doing our best to amplify a great sport you know i think we're bringing a lot of eyeballs to it and making people care and i think the most important thing that we're doing for the sport is making people realize that the fighters are the talent. Like, let's get these fucking fighters paid, man. There are, there are big bags. There's a lot of money in fighting, and I think the talent deserves that money. And Jake does too, and that's kind of what we stand for. Like, we're bringing the audience, pay up. What advantages will you have over Floyd on June 6th? I mean, there's the obvious shit. Uh, the height, the reach, the youth, um, the want, the wit. I'm gonna be in there talking my shit, you know? Uh, I'm better looking. Um, I got more money. What? You have more money than Floyd Mayweather? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I haven't seen either of your. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah. I just bought a dinosaur leg. Yeah, for sure. Uh, look, one thing we can say about Floyd, he's undefeated, but 
Father Time is undefeated. He's 44 years old. He hasn't been he's active. A, he's, a, he's a granddad. He's a granddad. You know, what is he overlooking in you or even himself that, that makes not overlooking this, anything because he it. can't see over me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He's looking right here. <laughs> Direct eye contact with the nips. Uh, you, you stood across from him in Miami to promote this fight before the gotcha had moment. Yeah. Um, were you intimidated by him? No. What was that like? No, not at all. I don't know how, why, how anyone's intimidated by Floyd. I've never been. I've never understood um, the Floyd Mayweather intimidation. I don't know like who, you know, he's not, he's not like a, Floyd's not like a badass. He wins fights, right? But no one's like terrified of Floyd Mayweather. He barely scrapes away with boring ass fights. I've noticed you don't have the gotcha hat tattoo on you. In fact, you don't, I don't think you have any tattoos on you. I have, I have one tattoo. It's a Pokemon. It's interesting. It's next to my penis. <laughs> for the after hours content. Yeah. Oh, you know, what is the difference fundamentally between you and Jake Paul? <laughs> How much time you got? <laughs> I'm gonna be honest, bro. We're yin and yang. Like, I'm sure he said the same thing, but we are the exact same and the exact opposite. Could not be more like, could not be more different. Like brothers to the T, white and black. Um, he's the problem child. I'm obviously an angel for sure. And uh, yeah, I love the kid, you know, he, he, he's the side of me that I am not. You hear people say, this is, you know, pro wrestling, this is whatever. It's gonna end with the two brothers facing off and fighting each other on pay-per-view. How do you react when you hear stuff like that? Everyone asks this question. Um, I really do believe part of the reason I was put on this earth was to entertain. Um, to put on a show to alleviate. And I think me fighting Jake will create a spectacle that A, has not ever been done and B, would probably never be done again. And that excites me. See, he, you sound pro, like this is gonna happen. He was a little on the fence. I, I'm on the fence as well. Like, I mean, think of, bro, my parents would fucking kill us. Like, they don't want that. One day we're like, yeah, like, we're, like, we should do it. And then the next day we're, we're like, nah, that's a stupid idea. You know, my dad is a, my dad's a hard ass from Ohio, but he still don't want that. Like he don't, my mom doesn't want it. My, my friends don't, no one wants it that's close to us. Don don't want it over there, but like, we've never sparred. I think I'm better. He thinks he's better. Different coaches, different style. I don't know. I don't know. Give us three years to, to hone these skills and uh, let's find out who's better once and for Paul. <laughs> uh, you're going to have a chance to get Floyd back on June 6th for, for, for striking your brother. Yeah. You think your brother will end up fighting Floyd Mayweather one day? Uh, I thought about this a lot. If I were to lose, sure. I bet Floyd would take that fight. I mean, why would he not? You know, he would have essentially defeated both the Pauls and made a lot of money doing it, right? He gets the glory. But I'm not gonna let that happen. That's part of my motivation. Like, sorry, Jake, I love you, but you ain't getting this fight because Floyd's not getting past me. Like, like fuck that, dude. <laughs> fuck that so hard. Uh, we've seen Floyd uh, since his, I guess, retirement from traditional fighting. Yeah. He fought Conor McGregor in 2017. He fought a, a Japanese kickboxer a couple of years later. Attention. He's fighting you. Is there anything you can learn from his, his recent victories that are non-traditional, which this fight is, yeah. that can help you defeat him. Yeah, I mean, you can watch a lot of Floyd Mayweather tape. You can watch him fight McGregor um, over and over and over again, watch him fight tension. Although, you know, it's, it's Floyd Mayweather. His arsenal is expansive, almost probably unlimited even. So watch as much tape as you like, but I don't know how much you're truly gonna be able to take away. But I, I will say like, I'm not impressed by Conor McGregor's performance. Like I, I really do truth believe, truthfully believe if you were to put Conor McGregor in here right now in a sparring session, I'd beat him. Like hands down, same with tension, 120 pounds soaking wet, kickboxer. Like I'm just not imp impressed, you know. McGregor's an MMA fighter. Like uh, he's, he's okay. He, get, he gets gassed easy. Um, just got his ass kicked by Dustin Poirier. Like he's okay. Um, tension obviously wasn't equipped to fight Floyd. I'm gonna make this really hard for him. 
I'm gonna make this really hard for him. This is what I do. I'm a boxer now for three years. And uh, long, strong, powerful, hungry, like I said, like, it's gonna be a tough night for Floyd, June 6th. If you try to box him, we've seen that historically what happens. Does this have to be a, a brawl? Does this have to be a rules uh, defined? You know, do you have to toe the line here and make this ugly? I'm not gonna make it ugly. This is gonna be the cleanest display of boxing you've ever seen. Yeah, I think this is gonna be two phases that Floyd has in this fight. Ready? One, realization that he might be in over his head. Realization that the kid he's standing across from isn't a fake fighter, isn't just a YouTuber, that he'd been doing this shit for some time now. And then when he realizes he might have to work a little harder than he thought, and he's not getting the ins that he wanted to, he's gonna hit desperation. And I think when Floyd's desperate and I can see in his face, when I see that he's broke, that's when I got him. And I think that's when he's gonna lose. Why do you think Floyd was that upset by the whole hat situation when it's really just a, it's just a troll job? Yeah, he didn't get a haircut. I'd be pissed too if my head looked like that. Boxing in terms of the traditional hardcore fighters, trainers, media, fans, uh, they, they don't want to open the door to stuff like this easily. But are the Paul brothers a, a, a plus or negative to the, to the old school traditional boxing game? I mean, you know, you had guys like Tyson Fury Deontay Wilder, Anthony Joshua going like the heavyweight division, putting on a show, drawing eyes to the sport. But it, I don't, I don't think it was like a universal thing. Now everyone is interested in boxing, man, and the model is being replicated time and time again. At what fucking point is it legit? Like, wake up and smell the coffee. Like we're here, we're here to stay. Uh, what's your future? in the fight game. It, 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 we know you have a, an amateur wrestling background. We know you're, yeah. you're not just some anime head or, or, or gamer or YouTuber, you're a legitimate Although athlete. I love those things. That's great. Love uh, my Pokemon, love my collectibles. That's probably fantastic, yeah. but uh, <laughs> you know, is mixed martial arts a potential reality? I mean, in, just in this side of the silo, you've got Bellator MMA linked with Showtime Sports. Yeah, yeah, I'll do an MMA fight for sure. I think, I think I'm actually probably more equipped to do an MMA fight just because my wrestling background. At this point in my life, you know, in two years, like I'll probably, Stick to strictly boxing. Um, it's a little easier on the body. Like MMA, MMA is tough. It's a tough ass sport. You know, I got my knees are all right. Uh, we'll see. But as far as my future goes, like you know, we, we want to be the I want to be the number one you know surprise fighter in the world. Just surprise everyone. Boo! Surprise! Here I am. Let's fight. Do wins and losses matter in what you guys are doing? I mean, you're zero and one technically professional. Yeah. But do, do do losses matter in terms of the entertainment side? Uh. Let me ask a question, answer your question by asking you a question. Do losses matter? Conor McGregor just got fucking his ass beat and got memed pretty bad. Like, loss, 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 loss. He's also the highest paid athlete in the world. I don't think so. I don't know. Can you put on a show? Do people come and want, want, want to watch you fight? Sheesh, you know? You've been uh, maligned publicly at times in your in your life as a celebrity. Uh, what, what do you think is the biggest misconception about Logan Paul? I don't, I mean, if there's any misconceptions, it's because I've led people to believe so. Like, it's all my fault. You know, like I, I put out some corny ass, cringe ass content um, in my youth, you know, back in the day. Uh, but as I continue to grow, mature, evolve, so does my content. So, yeah, I mean, miscon misconception, A, let me preface that with saying, like, any misconception is a fault of my own and probably isn't a misconception. It was probably an assumption someone had at a time that they deduce from my content that is probably accurate. Uh, but B, probably that I'm dumb. Like, I kind of talk dumb, I sound kind of dumb. I, I, I portray myself sometimes online like an idiot, but, like, uh, I'm not dumb. <laughs> you know, I'm the dude that beat Floyd Mayweather. Where did you get that from, dude? Head coach, only eats McDonald's, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. <laughs> Where did you even get that? Where did you get that sandwich? Bro, he had it in his back pocket. <laughs> the emergency double fucking rib. <laughs> the man tasks 
with creating a game plan for Logan Paul against the great Floyd Mayweather, a boxing OG, Milton LaCroix. How'd you figure that out? <laughs> there it is, he's everywhere. Uh, Coach. I'm everywhere. We just watched a private workout here with Logan. He's in great shape, he's got great size, but, but you know the, the rhetoric out there. Mm -hmm. Puncher's chance, if that, against somebody like Mayweather? That's one thing a bigger guy has against a small guy, is a puncher's chance. Everybody, you can't doubt that a puncher's chance. One punch could change the whole outcome of the fight. It's just that uh, Logan can't let Floyd get into his head. You know, it's like a David and Goliath. But the only problem is you got two Goliaths here. You got one small Goliath, which is Floyd Mayweather, and you got a bigger Goliath, which is Logan Paul. With what the public doesn't get to see that only you get to see in camp, what kind of intangibles does Logan have that, that gives you the confidence to come out and say, we're going to knock out Floyd Mayweather on June 6th? Well, let's say if Floyd's a computer, Logan's a calculator. OK, whatever Floyd thinks he's going to compute, Logan's going to outcalculate it. Like I said, he's, he's tall, he's big, strong, and he packs a punch. You know, Logan said, I've got nothing to lose. He used terms like, I'm willing to die in the ring. Does that make it extra dangerous for Floyd because of, because of that? that, that it... well, Logan's his own person. He's going to do what he has to do. We have a game plan. In any given time, the game plan could change in the middle of the fight. It all depends on who's doing what. But I know Logan is so confident right now, and not cocky, but just confidence that he is a great, which is gonna surprise everybody, boxer. He might have a better jab than Larry Holmes. <laughs> so his jab is gonna okay, be- you, you got people that are gonna watch that and go, come on, coach, I know, come this, on, you're listen, killing this This is here, what I'm right? saying. They're gonna say a lot of things. Well, you have a decorated resume. You took Shannon Briggs to a world title, countless Golden Gloves champions, pro fighters. You've seen in this game how you can get old overnight. Floyd is 44. Yeah, he's uh, five foot. Floyd is older, slower. He's going to try to be a little slick, but if he does what I think he's going to do, and that's what I'm calculating on, then he's in for a long night if, if it's going to be that. We ain't got nothing to lose. We don't have a damn thing to lose. But if we beat him, there's a lot to gain. That would break the internet, as the it kids would, say. It would, it, that's a W would break the internet. You're going to have some crazy kid from Ohio jumping into the boxing ring with him and his brother breaking the internet. You know, that hat, that hat thing was, was funny as hell. That was funny. I was, what was your vantage point on Got Your Hat? <laughs> well, it's so funny. I was next to Logan. Logan was doing an interview, and we were talking. He had his head down, and he was about to answer a question. Next thing you know, he looked like a deer. You know, he went, and he goes, oh, shit, and then took off. And I was like, oh, here we go again. And we took off, and then, like I said, like, like I said, Floyd's security, if they wanted to cause collateral damage, they could have, but they did not. They did not want to hurt Jake. They, they just... Like, Floyd was the one who actually hit him. But they did not touch, I, I was like right there next to them, and I was like, wow. And then when I realized these guys are not trying to hit him, they not, all they want to do is get that freaking hat. But at that point, he didn't have the hat. But they were still thought he had the hat. But, uh, you know, we, and then Jake just kept on screaming, I got your hat, got your hat. And so it was just a funny incident. But hey, let's think about it. Half an hour later, Jake is up live with got your hat. Don't forget, buy it. Where is buy this hat, by the oh, way? Oh, we got the hat. The hat is a... Uh, it's funny, I, I, it's, I was going to wear it, but I figured I'm everywhere, so I was going to wear the hat, I got your hat, which I have it in the, in the, in the house. But, uh, I mean, it went online, and went on sale, and it was selling hotcakes. People are still buying this hat to this day, so I, I know it's going through the roof. All right, know? Coach. And other, other people are even starting to, like, take other people's hats, which is stupid. There it is. But it's not Floyd's hat. Best of people. luck to you, bragging rights, June well, 6th. Thank you very much. Bragging rights, well... No, the only person going to be bragging is us. Floyd's going to be uh, miserable. <laughs> Can you look into the camera? Do you have a message for Floyd Mayweather? As Ooh, we close in here? I'm coming for you, Floyd. June 6th. Oh, I'm going to get your hat again. Fuck. <laughs> Ooh. Logan Paul, it's been a pleasure. It's showtime. This is for bragging rights. Sunday, June 6th, live on pay-per-view.